Welcome back to video two for topic eight, programming. This time we're gonna be looking at basic concepts. Okay, so we're here in terms of what we're gonna cover in the topic of programming. So what are basic concepts? We've got several we need to look at. When thinking about the steps, we need to create an algorithm, to write an algorithm, and um, solve a problem, the following concepts need to be understood and used, i.e. sequence, selection, iteration, counting and totaling, string handling, and the use of operators. Okay, so we're gonna start off with sequence. When designing algorithms, it is important to make sure that all the steps are presented in the correct order. This is known as sequencing, and can be displayed in pseudocode or in a flowchart. An incorrect order can lead to incorrect results and or extra steps that are not required by the task. So for example, the following is an algorithm for making a cup of tea. Or is it? Number one, we're going to add milk to the cup, and then we're going to add sugar to the cup, then we're going to boil the water in the kettle, then we're going to pour some of the boiling water into the cup, then we're going to put in a tea bag, then we're going to drink the tea, then we're going to fill the kettle with water, and then we're going to stir the tea. Well, that's not the correct order. What we should be looking at, we put the tea bag in the cup, I, I don't climb into the cup, we fill the kettle with water, we boil the water in the kettle, we pour some of the boiling water into the cup from the kettle, we add the milk, we add the sugar if needed, and then we stir the tea, and then we drink the tea. So basically we've put this order into the correct sequence, okay, so it will work properly. We move on then to selection. This is an extremely useful technique allowing different routes through the steps of a program. Um, usually if and case statements are used in terms of selection. It is a programming construct where a selection of code is run only if a condition is met. In programming there are occasions when a decision needs to be made. Selection is a process of making a decision. The results of the decision determines which path the program will take next. So for example, if the temperature is greater than 25, then output is too hot. Else, output good temperature. And if. So there we go, we've got two choices. If it's above 25, we do this. If it's 25 or less than 25, then we would output good temperature. Okay, and alternatively, case statements is something whereby we've got a list of usually constants um, within a list and we can output any of these. So the case of the day, we're looking at the days of the week, we output for case one, one output Monday, two output Tuesday, so on. Otherwise, if we've got something else, um, we're gonna output invalid because there's only seven days in the week, certainly in most calendars. We move on then to iteration. This is the looping element of a program and we might have used loops before um, in terms of while loops and for loops, but what are loops? There are times when a computer program needs to repeat certain steps until told otherwise, or until a certain condition has been met. This process is known as iteration. Iteration is often referred to as looping or repetition, since a program loops back to an earlier line of code. Iteration allows programmers to simplify a program and make it more efficient. Instead of writing out the same lines of code again and again, i.e. print, we love computing, or we love coding, in this case, over and over again, we could simply use a for loop, and we could set a count in range of six, so it's gonna repeat everything underneath six times, so it's gonna print out we love coding six times, one, two, three, four, five, six in the range, until it drops out. Okay, I'll show you this in Python, how it works. Within looping, we've got three different types of loop structures, which allow code to repeat under certain conditions. We have a um, count control loop for a set number of rep repetitions, iterations. We have a precondition loop, which might have no iterations. And we have a post condition loop, which always has at least one iteration. And there's a couple of examples here. So we spotted earlier the counting range um, six, so we can repeat this six times. But now we've got for i in range five, zero, minus one, print i. So if I run this in Python, and show you what's happening, we can control what is in this particular parentheses. Okay, so I've opened up Python and added the two loops. We've got the four counting range. So if I run this, and run the module, as you can see, Wheel of Coding has repeated six times um, based on this for counting range six. And then based on this one for i in range, it starts at five, 
and it's going to count down to zero in increments of minus one. So it's going to go five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so it's printing i is printing everything in this range in these parentheses. We also have a while loop, and this is used when the number of iterations is not known. There are two options either a precondition loop which may have no iterations or a post condition loop which always has at least one iteration these two things here so I have a password a secret password a secret keyword here called Python the user um, is able to input the secret word so please enter the secret word while the user's input does not equal the secret word the user input this basic line repeats Okay, and again I'll show you this in Python. So if I run this password checker code with the while loop, it's asking me to enter a secret word. Let me in. No. Um, Google. Help. No. If I try and type in Python in uppercase, no. Or sentence case, no. But if I type in Python in lowercase, it will go and it will, well, in theory, let me in. It just stops the program because I've got nothing in place to say to do anything otherwise. If I add these two new lines of code and I run the program again, make sure it's saved. If I now enter the word Python, it will let me in with a welcome message. Okay. We can also use these two types of loops for counting and totaling. So counting is a process of keeping a running count of how many times something happens in a program. It can keep track of how many iterations your program has performed in a loop. We set a counter and then we add counter plus one every time it runs through a loop. We can also use it for totaling and this is the process of keeping a running total of values in a program. It can be used to sum a list of numbers. Both are usually done by changing a variable they are used when adding up the marks for a quiz for example total has been assigned total plus number so in this case i've got some pseudocode here the total is zero my number equals zero and then i've got a for loop for x equals zero to ten so it's going to count from zero to ten it's going to do this loop ten times output please enter the number the person inputs their number that number is added to the total. So the total appears set at zero. When a person enters their number, it will add it to the total and it will keep adding to the total until it's looped through 10 times. And it's gonna end the for loop. Then it will output your total is and it will have added up those 10 numbers. Okay, using this here. This I've rewritten in Python and I'll run this for you and we'll have a little look. The first one counting if I run this program, we can see that my number equals zero to start with, zero. While my number is less than or equal to 10, print my number, but then the counting side of things, my number equals my number plus one. So every time it runs through this loop, it adds one to my number. So it's gonna count from one all the way to 10. Okay, and then when it gets to 10, it's gonna stop because it's because it will only run the loop if it's less than or equal to 10 hence there now for this one when we looked at this before in in the in the previous looping video if you use a for loop for new number in range we're going to start at five we're going to end at zero and we're going to count down in increments of minus one print the new number so it's going to go five four three two one as before okay okay so moving on to totaling total equals zero number equals one we're going to do this five times so we're going to enter please enter a number five times and we're going to add all these numbers together so let's have a look how this works if I run this program please enter a number uh, 10 20 30 40 50 and the total is 150 because it's added all of these numbers together okay your total is total Okay, so that is an example of counting and an example of totaling. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.